Hi everyone, so around a week ago I got an email from a company called Max Oak asking me to review their power bank which is 50,000 milliamp hour and as soon as I saw that 50,000 milliamp hour I thought yeah okay right 50,000 milliamp hour because there are some companies out there and they'll grab a power bank like this, which is say four or 5,000 milliamp hour. They'll slap a sticker on there that says 50,000 milliamp hour, and then they'll sell it. So at first I was like, hmm, 50,000 milliamp hour, really? But then I went to the Amazon listing and I saw that it's got, I don't remember exactly, but I think like 150 or 200 reviews, and they're all like four or five star. And then I saw the size of it in the listing and the weight, and I was like, okay, maybe this is the real deal. The weight adds up, the size adds up, the reviews are there. So I said, yeah, send it over. And honestly, I actually forgot about it because, you know, whenever someone says they're gonna send anything, it's not always a guarantee. So I kind of forgot about it and then it suddenly arrived. And let me tell you, this thing is a beast. This is a true 50,000 milliamp hour power bank. Now, before I talk about that, let's talk about power banks in general. There are so many different types. And the idea is that when you're out and about, you can recharge your gadgets without having to plug into the wall. So let's say I take this one here. It's about the size of a lipstick container. I can plug a USB cable into this and then I can connect it to my cell phone and it will start charging it just as if I had it plugged into the wall. So we've got small ones like this, kind of lipstick style. We have cases where you can slip your phone in and it's a battery and a case all in one, they're pretty clever. We've got power banks with wireless charging, so if your phone supports wireless charging you can sit it on top. We've got power banks which have built-in storage, this has 32 gig of storage. We've got these flat type ones which are quite thin. We've got these little pocket sized ones about the same size as a pack of cigarettes. Um, and then we've got like bigger bulkier ones like this, which is up to say 20,000 milliamp hour. But all of these have the same limitation. They only have USB output. This one from Max Oak can also recharge laptops and it also has a 12 volt output, which can be used for so many things, portable TVs, projectors, all kinds of things that run on 12 volt. So this thing is a real beast. So let me bring this closer to the camera so you can see the inputs and the outputs. So you can see here we've got four USB ports. So we can actually charge four things via USB at the same time. Then we've got our 12 volt output, our 20 volt output for laptops, and then our power button, which can also tell us how much capacity is left in the battery. And then we have our input charge port. So I know what you're wondering, is it a true 50,000 milliamp hour battery? Well, yes, it is. I tested it with my USB watt meter and a dummy load set to one amp. And it actually ran for 31 hours, six minutes and 54 seconds. Now, something to remember is that these batteries are rated at the internal voltage of 3.7 volts. So if we convert it to watt hours, we should get around 185 watt hours from this unit if it's legitimate. And let me show you my results. You can see it ran for 31 hours and we drew out 168 watt hours. Now you might be saying, well 168 watt hours, that's less than 185 watt hours. It is, but it's still within 10%. And 10% is pretty much the losses that you would expect going from the 3.7 volts up to the 5 volts. So you, you're allowed basically, I say you're allowed, but you know the industry standard is anywhere up to 10%. So that is still within the 10% factor. And that means this is a legitimate 50,000 milliamp hour power bank. So you've seen the power bank, you've seen the inputs and outputs, what else do you get? We get this pretty nice case. Um, I actually like this, I wish that more power banks included a case like this. It's a nice case, it's got good padding, and you've got a front zipper here where you can store extra things. And this is what else comes with it. You get this DC jack lead here, which you can use either for the 12 volt output or the 20 volt output. And the idea is that you'll pair it up with one of these connectors or some other connectors because they've actually expanded the range of connectors since they first released this. So you've got all these different connectors and the idea is you'll match it up with whichever one is needed for your laptop. Because yes, remember, this isn't just for USB, you can also charge laptops. And now let's get to another thing that's included, the charger. Look at this thing, this is a beast. Because imagine, if you had to recharge this using a micro USB cable like these traditional power banks, it would take forever. You know, 50,000 milliamp hour, it would take forever. So I don't mind the fact, in fact, I'm happy that they included this custom charger. This outputs 16.8 volts up to 2.5 amp. So I think that's somewhere around a maximum of 42 watts. So yes, this thing is a beast and let me plug it in and show you. So I've got my AC watt meter here. We'll plug in the charger 
and then you can see the green lights on, but if I plug it in, that light is now red to indicate that it is charging. And if we look at my watt meter, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. There you go. So you can see it's drawing around 42 point, well, somewhere around 42 watts. So this thing is gonna charge quickly. It's not gonna take forever. I've got smaller power banks which take much longer to charge than this thing. And this thing is a beast. You charge this up and this is probably gonna last you like a week or you know multiple weeks, depending on whether you, you know what you're using it for. Smaller gadgets use less power. Laptops are obviously gonna eat up more power. So yeah, I'm really happy with the charging solution they've got for this thing. It's gonna charge nice and quick. So talking about laptops, I've actually borrowed a couple for this video so I can demonstrate this power bank because I use a MacBook. So this is a Lenovo Chromebook. It's quite a small laptop, very portable. It's actually quite funny. It's got like a handle in the top, so it's like a briefcase, kind of cool. Anyway, this has got a small DC jack input. So all you have to do is try and find the right connector for your uh, laptop and in fact they do have a guide which can tell you whether your laptop's compatible and which connector you need to use and so on but I pretty much just try my luck until I find the right one so that fits okay I'll plug in the DC jack connector that comes with the set here and then I'll plug this side into our 20 volt output press the power button to turn it on and that should now start charging this laptop and there you go you can see on the side Hopefully you can see that there's a small orange light to indicate it's charging. And we can actually run that through my watt meter to measure how much power is being pushed into this. So let me set this up quickly. Okay, so let me bring this closer to the camera so you can see the results. Hopefully that's focused. So you can see it's drawing around 28 watts. Is that what it says? Yeah, 28 watts. So right now, it's being charged just from the power bank. So imagine you're out on the road, your laptop's dead, you're camping or you're on the beach. I don't know, do people use laptops on the beach? Maybe, but you're out somewhere, you've got no um, power supply, you wanna recharge your laptop, this thing can do it. That is, I mean, some people this might not be that exciting, but to me that's pretty awesome because none of these other power banks I have can do that. Now the maximum output of this is 20 volts free amp, so potentially 60 watts. Now if you have a really, really power hungry laptop, especially like say a gaming laptop, some of those require like huge amounts of power. So what you might find is that if you've got a really power hungry laptop, you have to leave it to charge. Like you can't use it and charge it at the same time because you'll be using more power than you're pushing in. Of course, it would still lengthen the time you get, but it might not add extra juice. But that's really for people who've got like super high end laptops. For the average user, 60 watts is probably gonna be enough. So here's another laptop I borrowed. It's a Lenovo. Um, I don't really know much more about it, G40 apparently. Again, these aren't my laptops, I just borrowed them for this demonstration. Now this one has this weird square block connector or rectangle, you've probably seen this. I think it's pretty common on some laptops. So I'll disconnect the Chromebook. And again, we'll run it through my power meter so we can measure how much power is going into it. Okay, so it's charging now, and it looks like this one is not consuming as much power, around 21 watts. Um, now I don't know how fully charged the battery is because of course nearer the end of a charge cycle a laptop will consume less power. So we're looking at around 21 watts. Let me see if I open it up and turn it on and if it increases. Okay, so yeah, that increased it. It's now up to around 30 watts because of course now not only is it charging the battery but the laptop's also consuming some extra power. So just a basic demonstration to show that it really can charge laptops. Now you might have thought that's it, there's nothing else to show you. Well remember, there's also a 12 volt output and I could show you this powering a portable TV or a projector or something like that. It would be interesting, but this is better. How about powering a DC to AC inverter? This converts low voltage DC to high voltage AC, the same kind of power that comes out of the wall at home. What I've got here is a basic converter that I made myself. This doesn't come with the kit, but you can make it yourself very cheaply. It's got a DC jack on the end and it converts it to a cigarette lighter socket or two cigarette lighter sockets. So I'll plug that into the 12 volt output and then this is a standard DC to AC inverter that you'd use inside a car. Let's plug this in and I haven't actually tested this yet so this is my first time to test it but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Let's turn on the power bank, turn on this. Okay, fans kicked in, that's a good start. And then what I've got here is a normal CFL light bulb. 
This is the kind of light bulb that you screw into your ceiling, but for today's demonstration, we're gonna plug it into the inverter to show 220 volts AC. Now, depending on your inverter, you might have 110, so it depends on you know your part of the world, but this is a 220, so let's plug this in. Well, this is a 26 watt CFL bulb. Let's plug it in, and there you go. It's turned on. So we've basically converted our power bank from you know 12 volt output to 220 volt AC. That's pretty cool, and that really opens up you know the use of this to more possibilities. Again, I had to make my own little adapter here, and you know I needed this inverter. But um, yeah, it can do it. It has a possibility. Now the 12 volt output is limited to 2.5 amps, which is around 30 watts. Although in my experience, it doesn't mind going a little bit over that, but technically it's limited to 30 watts. So I've told you all the good things about this power bank, and there's a lot of good things. What are the bad things? Well, one bad thing is you cannot take this onto an aeroplane. No passenger aeroplane in the world will let you take this on. It doesn't matter if it's checked luggage or hand luggage or anything, they will not allow this because of the super high capacity. So that's kind of a downside, but it's not that big a deal. Now, another minor thing, which doesn't really bother me that much, is it's got these four USB ports. The top two can output 2.1 amp each. The bottom two can output just one amp each. I would like it or prefer it if they could all output two amp. But realistically, I can't think of any time when I'm gonna need to charge four devices at two amp. So it's it's really being picky, but if I have to find you know something bad about it, that's pretty much the only thing I can say. And I've tested it, I can charge a laptop and output from the USB at the same time. I can draw out the full 2.1 amp. I can show you that now because I'm sure some people will ask. I'll just do that quickly. I mean, really, you're gonna have a hard time finding something bad to say about this. Um, of course, it's not the cheapest. It's not the cheapest because this is a genuine 50,000 milliamp hour power bank. Battery cells, like genuine battery cells are not cheap. The safety circuitry built in, it's not cheap. Having the different voltage regulators for the laptop, the 12 volt, the USB, it all adds up. So this is not a cheap power bank, but it's a quality power bank. So I've connected the tester to the 2.1 amp output and I'll increase this to 2.1 amp. In fact, 2.3 amp because why be fussy? And there you go, you can see it's outputting 2.3 amp or whatever without any issue, 4.9 volts. If we decrease that, I'm sure the voltage will go up a little bit. Yeah, so at 2.1 amp, it goes up to five volts, but even 4.9 volts is good enough. Um, really, there's not much you can say bad about this. It's a decent product. Let me bring it in closer so you can see the side. So there you go, it's the Max Oak K2. And you can find links for this in the video description down below. Like I said, they did send this to me for review and I'm pretty much in love. This is like a killer power bank. Imagine I can put this in my bag and then whenever someone says, oh, do you have a power bank? I can say, yeah, I've got a power bank here big enough to, you know, everyone in this conference or everyone on this bus or everyone on this train can plug into this because I've got enough juice for everyone. So a very impressive product. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.